Alex Paulton. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, regulator watches. But before I do that, uh, I wanted to show you something cool I recently picked up. It's a, a, a pedometer from the turn of the last century, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. It's a uh, French make. And uh, it's still completely functional. You can uh, see the mechanism in there. You can even see the little cam at the top. 12 o'clock, you can see the little cam to adjust stride length. Um, I won't do an episode on it specifically, but I believe I shall do an episode on uh, pocket watches. And we'll uh, include this in there. But I thought, what a cute little thing and um for 50 euros not a very expensive uh extravagance as it were so today we're going to talk about regulators and i just happen to have an alpina regulator the latest alpina regulator came out a couple of years ago they first came out with a regulator about 15 years ago. Um, and this is the most recent iteration. Uh, this is the special edition. It's got uh, red hands instead of silver hands and uh, some stitching. Uh, frankly, I think they should have made them all like this. It's a very nice piece. And when you think about how uh, regulators are mostly now uh, fancy dress watches, the fact that uh, the regulator has a very pedestrian, very working person's um, origin, it's kind of a shame that uh, most of the regulators available are dress watches. But the fact that this is a um, nice, rugged, 10 atmosphere, waterproof, screw down, crown, uh, sapphire, crystal sports watch, makes it a more accessible regulator for day-to-day, -day, and especially considering uh, it, you can get, get it for a little bit under 2,000 bucks, it's an accessible regulator as well. So if you wanted a regulator for your collection, but you didn't want to drop five, 6,000 on a fancy schmancy regulator, this will do it. Uh, so let's turn the camera around and take a closer look at the watch. So here we are with the Alpina regulator the this is the limited edition version the biggest differences between the uh, limited edition version and the uh, regular versions as far as i can tell is the red hands and the uh, nice strap with the um, red contrast stitching so um, if you don't get the limited edition don't feel bad especially if you're not a big fan of the color red I personally think it does look really sharp and I think they should have just made all of them look like this and uh, not worry about having a limited edition because um, I think the red on the blue is very striking and makes for an excellent uh, presentation now the issue of a regulator is to address the um, problem of potentially misreading a clock at a glance. So for example, if I say had a um, traditional watch and I glance at this, let's say looking at this um, Gigi Lacote uh, Polaris on the right, if I glanced at it, is it uh, 10 minutes to eight? Is it 20 minutes to 10? Um, if I do a quick glance, especially when we're talking about a stick index like that, it's easy for the eye to quickly misread that as one continuous line, and then boom, you've made an error in reading time. The uh, regulator watches came out specifically to address that issue uh, after a particularly horrific uh, train accident in the late 18 hundreds. Um, the issue of timing was critical, hence uh, ball, ball watches were very um, famous for regulating the uh, train systems of America, and the term get on the ball comes from ball watches. But uh, the regulator itself is a classic design intended to v make it incredibly clear what the hours, minutes, and seconds are. So in this case, uh, this is the seconds subdial, this is the hours subdial, and then this is the minutes. So you can 
basically see elapsed time at a glance for minutes. You see the hour. And of course, you have the running seconds. Now, um, determining what hand is the hour hand and what hand is the minute hand has been a problem through uh, watch design over uh, the years. And uh, most famously, uh, I shouldn't say most famously, but one of the famous solutions uh, Tudor did was the famous snowflake hand. So you look and you can tell which is the uh, hour hand because it's uh, so bulbous. But in the case of the regulator, there is no doubt whatsoever. Now, this is a very nice piece. And uh, it's interesting when you think about how regulators were intended for um, boat captains and uh, train conductors and people who had a relatively outdoor life. I mean, uh, they weren't lumberjacks, but they weren't sitting in an office. So the fact that most regulators today are uh, dress watches and fancy dress watches at that. Chrono Swiss makes some sporty um, regulators, but uh, as far as I know, I think Alpine is the only company who currently has a nice um, sports regulator out there, and it is a pretty piece. As you see, it's got um, they call it a Cote de Genève dial. I refuse to call it that. I'll call it a corduroy dial. Uh, I think Cote de Genève has a lot more to do with the uh, finishing and sculpting than just putting waves in a piece of metal. So I'll call this a corduroy dial. It is beautiful dial. The applied index is very uh, nice and um, Alpina is printed nice and crisp. The texturing and coloring of the subdials makes it a very um, beautiful presentation. And all in all, it's just an interesting sports watch. It's got a screw down crown. It's an ETA base uh, automatic module inside, uh, probably a 2824, I'm guessing. And um, with a screw down crown and high level of water resistance, it's a really refreshing take on an automatic uh, sports watch, you see? So Alpina, Regulator, Swiss Made, 10 Atmospheres, Sapphire, Crystal. Um, so we really have a nice regulator presentation here, uh, sports regulator, let's pull back a little bit. And um, one of the things about it is it's colossal. It's a big watch, but since it's such a clean and simple presentation. See, it's a 45. This is a pretty big case. And uh, it's 12 thick. So it does sit well for a uh, watch of its size. And since it's not a busy face, it doesn't come across as this big, bulky, complicated watch. It comes across as a pretty flat, uh, clean offering. Well, here, I'll show you. Oh, by the way, uh, watch check, I'm wearing my Explorer 2 on a NATO today. And um, Rolex also uh, does something to distinguish the hour hand. In this case, they have the famous uh, Mercedes hand. But again, some way to make the hour hand more uh, discernible. So let's put down the Rolex and let's slap on the Alpina. And you see, I have an 18 centimeter wrist, but it's not a fat wrist, um, relatively big hand to go with it. It's uh, about a um, 65 millimeter top to bottom measurement. And uh, as you see here, it just looks nice on the wrist. The uh, way that the uh, lugs curve down suits it well. And um, it's got a really nice presence because of its width to height ratio. It'll slide under a sleeve pretty easily, I would imagine. Um, and this is the kind of watch you could probably get away with wearing in all kinds of uh, circumstances. And because it's a regulator, it will catch a lot of attention. Um, this watch, you could get your hands on it for a little less than $2,000. Uh, and uh, like I said, when you think about your traditional blue face steel sports watch, you don't think of a regulator, but uh, this Alpine regulator is a really nice piece. I'm very pleased with it. Um, it's a good looking piece and uh, yeah, I'm glad I have it in my collection. Rugged, useful, and interesting.
So um, let me throw in a little loom shot right here. So you see, it's got a nice uh, loom, and uh, you can pretty much tell what the where the hour hand is because it's isolated. You know, that's why the hour hand kind of blocks off those um, indices, so there's nothing to confuse you where the hour hand is because the hour is at the uh, ten o'clock. There are no uh, conflicting illuminated indices to confuse. And then, of course, the running seconds at 6, and then the minute hand comes out very sharply and clearly. And that was the loom shot. It does have a nice loom. I must admit, though, um, if you don't have glasses, it might be a little difficult to see the uh, loom on the smaller indexes. But the bottom line is, uh, depending on what you're uh, doing, you're looking for minutes, usually uh, in a timing situation, and the minutes are very, very uh, well highlighted. So um, that was the Alpina regulator. Let's uh, turn the camera around and close out the episode. So, that was the uh, Alpina limited edition regulator, a really cool sports watch and a different way to look at the time, guaranteed to start a conversation at least. Um, so, thanks for taking the time to uh, take a look at this watch with me, and um, if you have any questions, please leave a question in the comments, and of course, please subscribe. So, until the next time, Thanks for taking the time to be with us today.